Hi. <laughs> so we're in a weird place, so we've got an actual camera person. Thank you, a camera person, for running. <laughs> All right. Uh, you'll take the whole video. That's fine. Um, so, I, hey, if this works out for you guys, and you once you get to watch this, if you like this better, where you can actually see my face and me scribbling on the board, uh, then maybe I'll steal my daughter's camera from the house and do it that way. It'll probably be better quality, right? Anyway, we are talking about, where did I put it? Adding and subtracting and multiplying complex numbers. But before we can figure out how to add and subtract and multiply these numbers, we gotta even figure out what they are. So let's go way back. Like all the way back to the beginning of the year. We first started talking about the natural numbers. These were the counting. One, two, three, four, five, right? Then we added zero and we got the whole number. And then we added the negatives and we got the integers. And at this point, I had someone go, okay, wait. M for natural, totally get it. W for whole, totally makes sense. Why are the integers Z? Yeah, I think you actually did ask it earlier. Why are they Z? And I went, um, I'll tell you later. Hi, today's later. Let me finish the diagram and then we'll come back as to see why it's, it's not I. All right, then after the integers we had the rationals which were fractions and then I said well I can have this other group here that are the not rationals and then if I put all of this into a box I could call this box the real and then I had someone else go now wait a second if you can have rationals and not rationals can you have reals and I went, yeah, um, hang on to that. We'll come back to it. Hi, we're doing it today. We can, in fact, have the reals and the not reals. The not reals are called imaginary numbers, and the symbol is I. That's why images have to be Z. I, I don't get it either. So the imaginary numbers, the imaginary numbers they're, okay, they're not like fairy numbers where we suddenly have fairy beings and they poop glitter. That's not, what, <laughs> that's not what we mean by imaginary numbers, okay? Imaginary numbers, it's really just one number. It's I, and it asks one question. It answers one question. It answers the question, what do I have to multiply to itself to give me a negative one? That's the question imaginary numbers answer. If I said what's the square root of four, what would you say? Two. Yeah. Or? Four over two. Negative two. Negative two. Yeah, yeah, I said that. You did. But like, I didn't say it, you know? Yeah, you're like. It's two or negative two because two times two is four and negative two times negative two is four. Yes? Yes. Which means we're asking what number do you multiply to itself to give me a negative one? one. Negative, negative one. one. Okay. Here's the issue with that. The same, like, yeah, they're not the same number. Positive one is like saying I have one marker. A negative one means that I've thrown away all the markers and I, I owe some, I get borrowed a marker. And I have to give that marker back because it's not mine. Like this one. I may have borrowed from the teacher whose room we're in. Okay? So they're a different quantity of marker. Make sense? So they're not the same value, which means... I, I need to make up a number. So they did. They made up a number. They said I. If I take this new magical number I and I multiply it to itself, it has the property that it is negative 1. And so the imaginary numbers... The only two things you have to remember is that. That i is the square root of negative 1. And when you square i, you will get negative 1. Because that's the property. Okay? Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Well, I can put both of these things into a box. Because us mathematicians love boxes. Our mathematicians went, wow, this is really kind of complicated, so we might as well call these complex numbers. <laughs> uh -oh. 
But here's the thing, guys, is handling the complex numbers is not itself complex. It's actually really easy. It's the way these numbers look that could be complicated. Okay? Here's how they look. A plus BI is one number. It's one complex number with two parts. It has a real part. So a natural number, a whole number, an integer, a rational, like fraction, or non-rational, pi or e or any of those weird crazy numbers. And the imaginary part, which has this little scale factor we're multiplying to it, that is itself real. So again, two, three, four, pi. <laughs> Gonna play with some stuff now. I would like some numbers, positive or negative, some integers, please. Four. One. Four. <laughs> and what was the other one? Negative one. Negative one. All right, I need some more. Thirteen. Four hundred. Four hundred. Was that positive or negative four hundred? Positive. So positive four hundred. All right, and if I said add, what would we do? Add? Uh, you're, you're not wrong. How? 401 i. All right, so we're going to go straight down. We're going to do this negative 1 on the i and add it to the 400 on the i. 399. 399 i. And then here. 17. 17. Now, is this 399 positive or negative? Positive. positive. Is the 17 positive or negative? Positive. positive. Since it's in the front, I don't need to put the positive. We're done. That's it. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not complicated, is it? It just feels like it should be because uh, it's called complex. What if I did that? 59? Where would be the 9? In the front, the real part would be nine. Positive nine or negative nine? Negative. We're not sure. It's negative. <laughs> it's negative because the thirteen is the larger. The feels negative, like the larger of the two. Negative one minus. And now it's negative one minus four hundred. Negative. Negative three ninety nine. Nope. Negative four oh one. a different way because I think if I write it a different way suddenly it's gonna be like oh I get this okay can I clean this up real quick yeah okay. I'm gonna write it what uh, numbers did we have and 400. 400 does this suddenly look like it makes more sense mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yeah this looks like just handling normal polynomials we're going to get rid of the parentheses on the first group. We're going to distribute the negative into the second group. I'm going to collect like terms. And suddenly it's like everything that we've done for the past two weeks. Perfect. Your worksheet has a whole bunch of those for you to practice. Add and subtract. Have fun. Before we leave this realm though, I can have two complex numbers equal to each other. Okay? Where A, B, C, and D are just some real numbers. Okay? Now, if they're equal to each other, the real parts are the same, and the imaginary parts are the same. And I hope at this point you're going, well, no, sh duh. That makes sense, right? But then I can be evil and I can do something like this. Tell me what the values of x and y are. You only have one equation. The question I have. 
do we have two complex numbers? Yes. Yes. I have two numbers made up of a real part and an imaginary part. Okay, so two complex numbers. Are the complex numbers equal to each other? No, they don't look it, but you see the symbol right here? It yeah. means they are. I don't care what they look like, they're equal. So two complex numbers e equal to themselves, equal to each other, which means the real parts are equal, and the imaginary parts are equal. <coughs> Thing on the left looks really easy to handle, yes? Yeah, so for what? Thing on the right looks a little more complicated because of the I sitting there, yes? But the I is on both sides of the equal sign. Cross them out. Yeah. Suddenly, it's easy to deal with. That's it, that's how you do that next section. <laughs> yeah, not complicated. <laughs> Matt, someone invent the time machine, please. Go back in time. Tell these Jennifer. mathematicians not to call them complex numbers, but to be called easy peasy numbers. <laughs> and it'll save us all the headache of. Or the, just wipe out. Or just wipe out all the numbers. <laughs> no numbers for you. He's, he's the, instead of the soup nut. Oh, wait, that's a Seinfeld reference. I'm, I'm too old. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Moving on. My header today said add, subtract, multiply. We did the add, we did the subtract, we even dealt with when they were equal. Now we're gonna multiply. And the punchline for what we're about to do next is leading us into that, which is tomorrow, okay? So that's our goal. We're gonna multiply that. And I hope a lot of you right now are staring at that and guessing how you might want to multiply them. And you're not wrong. But before we can get to that, Let's talk about how we multiply the imaginary parts. Oops. All right, so things like 2i times 4i. How would I multiply that? <laughs> 2 times 4. 8i squared. And then i times i. But we had started the conversation today saying that while i is the square root of 1, i squared is negative 1. Do I see an i squared sitting there? Then change it to the negative 1 because in the end of the day, we would much prefer to look at real numbers than we would to look at imaginary ones. So on these, at any step, working on them, if an I squared appears, you have every right to go into that I squared and change it into a negative one. Spoiler alert, you can be working on things and have a negative one and be able to turn it into an I squared and then be able to do more stuff with it. I'll show you an example of that later. She's already, she wants to know, I can see it. She's like, tell me. Easy enough? Yes. Yeah? All right. Yesterday, we ended the conversation with the four examples on the bottom. Examples that looked in your homework a lot like this. Yes? Mm -hmm. And I said the way to handle these is to add in that missing term and then factor it like you have all the others. And I said, now as you're factoring this, watch for the pattern that falls out at the bottom. Okay? Have you started on that section yet, a few of you? Yes? Have you been able to see a pattern yet? You think you see the pattern? You're not quite sure if it's a pattern, but you're seeing something. Good. Tomorrow, when we go through, we start doing these, the same pattern is going to fall out. Okay? We're going to practice that for a day or so. We're going to look for that pattern, and we're going to compare it to this pattern and go, something's up. And then the next day I'll show you what the pattern is and be like, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what you saw. Okay? And I'll confirm it. But I want everyone to go through that moment of exploring and questioning, am I seeing what I'm seeing? Okay? And then I'll confirm for you what you see. Sounds good? All right. So you can add them now. You can subtract them now. 
we know what to do when they're equal, and we can multiply at least the imaginary portions. Yes? All right, tomorrow, full complex multiplication, which is not complex at all. All right, that's it. That's all I had. Bye. Okay. <laughs>